Hi, there's Mr. Rops. And Mr. Co. And Ms. Mary Fee. Okay, and so we're going to do standard form of quadratic functions today. And when you're done these, these couple uh, videos we're doing, you're going to be able to read some information from the equation. You're going to be able to calculate important features and then be able to accurately sketch the quadratic. And then finally, given some information, calculate the equation. And we're all about the standard form of the quadratic function, which looks like this particular lovely thing here. And from this equation, there's a couple things that you already know already. You know from previous things that this a value is the same a value that was in factored form and that was also in the vertex form. This tells us the vertical stretch, or if it's negative, it might have a reflection. Same as previous. And the other value that is helpful to us is this one here, the c, and that is the y-intercept. And that happens because if you put x to be 0 in, you get c. Let's do an example to see to actually see what's going on. Okay, so here we go. Given the quadratic function 2x squared minus 4x minus 16, we need to find the y-intercept. So, Ms. Murphy, we're going to find the y-intercept. What do I have to do? First of all, you just have to let x equal 0. Right, same as always. So x is 0, and I plug it in. I get 2, 0 squared, minus 4 times 0 minus 16, which ends up being negative 16. But I, I didn't actually have to do all that calculation because I can just look at the end and know that value is always the y-intercept when it is in standard form. Okay, and are we going to write that like that or are we going to put this as a coordinate? Good idea, put it as a coordinate. Here is my coordinate 0, comma, negative 16. Okay, next one, x-intercepts. Find the x-intercepts, Mr. Cole, what do I do for that? Okay, so now we need to set y equal to 0. Okay, so y is 0, and so I have 2x squared minus 4x minus 16. Okay, and we need to try and solve this now. So what I would do is, first of all, look for common factors. Oh, I think I see one. I see a 2 in here. 2, 2, 2, all even. So let's pull that out. Okay. I get 2x squared minus 2x minus 8. So that should make it, hopefully, easy to factorize. So we need two numbers that multiply to give negative 8 and add to give negative 2. So I'm going to try 2 and 4, and I'm going to make sure the 4 is the negative one. Okay, great. And so now when I solve actually for x, I can divide both sides by 2, divide by 2 both sides, and the 2's go away, because it's still 0 is equal to x plus 2 x minus 4, and then we know from here that x is minus 2 and x equals 4. So my x-intercepts are negative 2 comma 0 and 4 comma 0. Nice. All right. So if I come along here and I start to make a little bit of the graph, let me throw some uh, a graph up here so we can see what it looks like. Start to see what it looks like. We'll start to build it. Move back to here. Okay, so I know currently that I have y-intercept of negative 16, x-intercept is negative 2. So here's negative 2, and here is 4. My y-intercept is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I'm going to estimate down. It's going to be about here at negative 16. Okay. Okay. Next thing, we need to find the vertex. And we're going to do two different ways. When we find the vertex with this form, I'm going to give you a secret formula, and it is called x equals minus b over 2a. And if you look at that, that comes from the quadratic formula, from this part here. You get uh, b squared minus 4ac over 2a. For the vertex, we are saying this part here is 0, and so we're going to end up with our, min our x value for the vertex. So okay. we can use that formula to find the vertex. That's the one way. Let's do that way first. Okay, so going down, I know my equation was y is equal to 2x squared minus 4x minus 16. Okay, so what's b and what's a? Right. That's what we need. All right, so this is the formula. b is always, it goes ax squared plus bx plus c. And so the b is equal to negative 4, a is 2. 
So if we plug our values in, we get x is equal to minus 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 a negative 4 over 2, which ends up being... 2 times 2. 2 times 2. No, it's um, oh, 2a. 2a, oh, a, yeah. thank you, over... Oh, so, I just 4 over 4. And see. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So we get 4 over 4, which of course is 1. So that's, that's the x value, which is going to be here. How do I find the y value, Miss Murphy, if this is the x value of my vertex? Um, you could sub 1 into your original equation for yeah. x. Okay, so when I plug that in, I get this, which is 2 minus 4 minus 16, which is a negative 18. And so my vertex, my vertex ends up being uh, 1, comma, negative 18. If I look down here, 1, negative 18 will be roughly down here. Well, that was the one method. I said there's two methods. The other way we could do it is when we had factored form, we looked at the average between these two x-intercepts, so the midpoint there, which is going to be x to be negative 1. So I can get x to be get negative 1 from my intercepts here. And you just find y the same way as before, right? Right. Okay. The axis of symmetry, well, that gets pretty straightforward when we have that. That's going to be just this line through my vertex. Okay. That's my axis of symmetry. And we have to write it as an equation. So it's x equals 1 is my axis of symmetry. Of symmetry. Okay, we've got a lot of information here. Let's keep on going. What's next? Okay. Sketch the graph. We have all our information that we need. Okay, so from the symmetry, we know that here's my y-intercept. There's another point on the other side. And then I just can connect these dots. And this is a little bit tricky to do. On... Oh, that's the best one I've done yet. <laughs> all right, so there is our graph opening up. Final details to think about. Write down the transformations that have happened to y equals x squared. Should we just draw y equals x squared on there? Just oh, a good idea. What do you think? About. I think it's a great idea. Let's put it in red. So here is x squared. y equals x squared is here. Okay, and we know that it is now the blue curve down here. So what's all happened to our curve there, Mr. Cole? Okay, well it's been it's been moved, and, and has it been stretched? Have we worked out what what a is yet? Yes, the a value is two. Ah, yes, we got that at the beginning. So it has been stretched mm -hmm. um, vertically, right, by a scale factor of two, and it's also been been moved along. So it's been moved one unit to the right and 18 units down. Okay, so we start off with a vertical stretch by factor of two. Yep. And then we went to the right, translation, translation by one. Yep. And then down, negative 18. Is that gonna fit? Yeah, we'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Down negative 18. Okay, that's kind of redundant. Down 18. Down 18. Down 18. Yep. Or up negative 18. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's the transformations. That's what happened to the y equals x squared graph. And then we have find the point on the curve when x equals 2. Well, if I look on my graph, it's going to be around here somewhere. So, but I have to do more accurately than that. So I take my equation. We could actually do that one from symmetry, couldn't we? Oh, we could do that from we symmetry. Do it on. But yeah, let's, let's do it this way, just so it works. And we'll double check with our symmetry. So if I make, make x be 2, plug it in, I get 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 8. I get 8 minus 8. Oh, I copied the question down wrong, I think. It's supposed to be 16, isn't it? So this is 16. 16, 16, minus 16, which is negative 16. So my point is 2 comma negative 16. And if we look up here, 
this was 0, negative 16, our y-intercept. Reflect it over, and this will end up being the 2, negative 16 from symmetry and calculation. And finally, the last part. Whew, I'm getting tired. That's a long one. Write down the domain and the range. Well, if I take my, steal my axis of symmetry to think about my domain, if I move this line around, it will always touch the graph no matter where I put this line, because this will eventually go up forever. And so I can say that the domain is the set of all real numbers. And the range, well, the range, we always look at the horizontal lines going this way. And so it touches the graph everywhere here, all the way down, but it stops touching it down here at the vertex. And so I know that it has to be, y has to be bigger than or equal to negative 18. A lot of information there, lots of parts of the equation. Some of it is reviewed from the previous forms, but this is a form that we need to recognize and be able to use as well. The key ones, we have A, we have the y-intercept, and then we have the vertex.